This is Kentucky Field Radio. My name is Charlie Baglin. In the spirit of summer adventure, we would be remiss if we didn't pay some attention to an event that's really putting Kentucky on the map this year. On August 21st, we will have visitors from around the world and from many states across the nation. They'll be converging on western Kentucky. It's the Great American Total Eclipse of the Sun. Because Kentucky Field Radio is a statewide program, and we know that western Kentucky will get a lot of visitors from across the state, we'll do our due diligence as a public affairs radio broadcast to help spread the word of what's going on. Likely a -a once-in-a-lifetime event to be seen here in Kentucky. And what I'll call the epicenter of the eclipse is just a few miles north of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, there in Christian County. And what I mean by the epicenter is that is the spot where there will be more total darkness for a longer period than at any other place on planet Earth. NASA is going to be there. Major networks will be set up. And I bet you, too, thousands of your closest friends will be there. 124, I think it was, in the afternoon on August 21. It will be essentially like nightfall. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if businesses were closed, schools let out, people call in sick to make that trip to western Kentucky to see this. Mark Stephen Williams, I know, will be there. He is an astronomer, and for years and years he was a fellow broadcaster connected to the Kentucky Field Radio Show. But here now in the astronomy role, and Mark, you are a man in demand these days. Hey, Charlie, it's great to be with you again. How are you? The eclipse is coming. Is everything still on schedule? Well, I mean, unless there's a a huge shift in the cosmos that I haven't heard about, yes, on uh, Monday, August 21st, early in the afternoon, uh, we're going to see our first total solar eclipse in the United States since 1979, and the very first uh, in Kentucky since 1869. What makes it? Ground zero. Well, you get at least a partial eclipse over virtually all of North America, Charlie. And then within about a 70-mile wide band, you will get the totality. And totality is really the holy grail for this because between about Carbondale, Illinois, and Franklin, Kentucky, you get about 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, inside that totality band is about... 70 miles wide, but anywhere along that central path. If you're in Oregon, it'll come ashore. The fantastic thing about this, first of all, imagine the eclipse will begin over the North Pacific Ocean, and imagine seeing a sunrise with the sun in eclipse. That would be interesting. Oh, man, and that will occur. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Early in the morning, total eclipse for people will move from coast to coast in about 90 minutes. I had a chance to visit with some of the fine folks in Marion in Crittenden County, and I mentioned to them, you know, you're going to have an eclipse. And people say, well, isn't that something that's just happening in Hopkinsville? Well, no. All of North America will see at least a partial eclipse, and for those along that center line, you'll get totality. I'm going to be at Ken Lake State Resort Park. We're a little bit south of the center line, but we'll get two minutes. That will be the way things fall into place, and the serious eclipse chasers, I mean, if the weather is nice, we may see a million people come in to the counties in western Kentucky if the weather is going to be nice that day. Hopkinsville has taken the lead. I drove right through Kate Is and Hopkinsville, and they've got signs up. The folks there in Hopkinsville told me several years ago when I started inquiring about a place to have my eclipse party, They said they started getting inquiries about this in 2007. The eclipse will start in the central time zone a little bit before noon, about 11.55. The maximum uh, we will get, or the totality, depending on where you are, will be about 1.24, 1.25 in the afternoon. Of course, that translates to 2.24 in the eastern time zone. And then the eclipse, it'll be about three hours. I mean, communities are trying to prepare for... For, for instance, we had a, I was at one of the eclipse planning conferences last year, just about a year ago, in Carbondale, and Randy Reed, who's the deputy emergency management director in Lyon County, which is Eddyville, said we may see potentially uh, the population of our county is 8,000 people, and 800 of those 
are in the state pen at Eddyville. Hmm. Uh, and what happens if 150,000 people come in to see us? So the issue is going to be traffic. Uh, Hopkinsville certainly may, may see three, you know, a couple hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand people. So. Uh, this is Kentucky Field Radio. We're off at a time. We're talking about wildlife and conservation, outdoor recreation. But one thing that ties astronomy with this show is that a lot of the constellations out there are named for wildlife. Right. There's a bunch of them. I mean, the bear, the archer. Uh, how many are there, really? Well, everybody knows Ursa Major, the big bear, and Ursa Minor, the little bear, you know, the big constellations that are up in the sky, Big Dipper, Little Dipper, Leo the lion, Taurus the bull, and the scorpion. And a lot of these, Charlie, come out of Greek mythology. People are surprised when I tell them this. We only have 88 constellations. It's not like there are thousands of them. There are only 88 constellations. That's global, right? So yeah. if you were in the South Pole, you would look up, you would see other constellations. Yeah, you're, but you're, anywhere from any point on the globe, there, there exactly, are only 88. You're exactly right, because the constellations we see here in the northern hemisphere are different. You know, you get down below the equator, or even, you know, I mean, constellation Scorpius for us right here kind of skirts along the southern horizon. It's a really nice, uh, really nice constellation for summertime viewing, but if you get down near the equator, it's higher up in the sky. So there are 88 of them, and it, it, before we went on the air, we talked about this, and I did a little count, and by my count on the list, I show 42 of those 88 constellations as either animals or creatures. Now, some of these can be, you know, the, the, the mythological flying horse, or there's a dragon, and so on and so forth. And then we have 21 of them are instruments that, that uh, were named by Lacaille in the 18th century, and these are things like uh, Circinus, which is a, a compass, telescopium is obvious, that's a, that's a telescope, so on and so on and so forth. And then, but the rest of them, you know, we have the actually 13 zodiacal constellations. Some of those fall under the, the mythology. Uh, some of them are just animals. We have, the, you know, the scorpion and Orion. Orion's the hunter. Well, the, the scorpion supposedly killed Orion, so they're placed in the sky at opposite parts of the sky, so they're never in the sky at the same time. <laughs> As Orion's setting, and Scorpius is up in the sky, so so you have things like, oh, let me see here, Aries the ram, Aquila the eagle, Cygnus the swan. So you have an eagle and a swan right up there high in your sky. And again, probably the most memorable, Leo the lion, Scorpius the scorpion, Ursa major, Ursa minor. Uh, Pisces the fish, how about that? Uh, well, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's just coming up in the really, really, really early, early morning sky right now. So you have fishes, you have swans, you have dolphins, you have little horses, uh, cranes, water serpents, water snakes, so on and so on and so forth. There are wildlife creatures all over the sky. Yes, sir. So just look up and find them. Finding them is a different thing. You were on the show about a year ago. And this subject came up that there are maps, and I said there are also apps. And you didn't use apps. You like you prefer maps. Right. The one I have, and there are probably a jillion of them out there, is called Night Sky. But right. if you wanted to use the old maps, where do you recommend we look? Well, there's a great resource. It's an online resource. It's called skymaps.com. It has the map for the month, which not only shows you that constellations that will be up in your primetime evening, but it gives you the positions, and I'm glad you mentioned this, of the primetime planets. Skymats.com. Yes, sir. I was looking here. I had done a little bit of research before I called you up, Mark, and I was curious, what about wildlife during this eclipse? How are they going to react to it? And I found this blurb. It was from Atlantic Daily. They say specifically birds will all go into roost. Mm -hmm. Nocturnal insects such as crickets, cicadas will begin calling, believing mm -hmm. that at 1 o'clock in the afternoon it's actually nighttime. Mm -hmm. And mosquitoes will, may even come out to bite. 
Does any of this surprise you? No. Well, I mean, it's nature. They'll believe that it's getting dark. It's going to become nighttime. Livestock, wildlife will believe that night is coming because you have that shadow. Situate yourself on a high hill. You'll see the sky darkening to the west of you. It'll kind of become twilight, like a giant black whale as it approaches as that shadow whips along the line. Then during totality, you'll see it kind of all around you. But And during the t- two minutes or so of totality, we'll have uh, planets Venus, Mars, Mercury, and Jupiter pop out. The position of the sun on that August day will be right at the front foot of Leo the Lion. So you'll see the constellation talk about wildlife. You'll see Leo the Lion pop out. Well, Mark, I appreciate you coming on the show. Maybe we'll talk again before the big day. Charlie, it's it's great, great to be with you. Also, uh, uh, Viewing totality, you have to be very, very careful about that. You never look directly at the sun. Look me up, hit me up on the website because we have safe solar viewers, eclipse shades that you can not only use to watch this eclipse, but to look for sunspots and that sort of thing. So we're at stargeezerastronomy.com, also on Facebook. We'll look for you there, Mark. Thank Charlie, you. Nice, to, nice to hear you again. Take care. Kentucky astronomer Mark Stephen Williams. Look at the night sky tonight. Tell me how many wild animals you see. Up next, the official spokeswoman for all things eclipse in the city of Hopkinsville. She joins us as we wrap up our show on Kentucky Summer Adventure Tourism. Stay with us. You're listening to Kentucky Field Radio. We're back with our final few minutes on Kentucky Field Radio. This is Charlie Baglin. This state has Red River Gorge, Natural Bridge, a moonbow at Cumberland Falls. In Kentucky, it's true. Our outdoors are outstanding. Now, there's one thing that's probably the biggest event in the world of nature, and it's kind of taken many people by surprise. The very first word of this came around 10 years ago with the Great American Eclipse. The best spot on earth to see it is in Hopkinsville. Personally, I think being on a boat on Lake Barkley would be kind of fun, too. I know the TV crew is going to be doing that. And Brooke Young from the city of Hopkinsville joins us now. Hi, Charlie. How are you? Well, I'm better now since I'm talking to the most popular girl in western Kentucky. I'm very familiar with Kentucky Field, and my dad is a huge fan, so um, I know he'll be excited just about you guys covering some solar eclipse stuff and talking about it and anything we can do to spread the word to the entire bluegrass and let people know that this event is coming. We essentially are going to be doubling our population that weekend, and we currently have reservations from folks from 33 different states and 12 different countries that are coming to Hopkinsville. I love Hopkinsville. It's a great place, especially if you're headed down to either of the big lakes. I'm curious, have you already seen a boost to your tourism, people just coming into town just out of curiosity? Let's check this town out before August 21st. Yeah, we definitely have people that are stopping through to check it out, whether they're taking a road trip and add this to their map along their way, or maybe they're making a special trip just to come and check out where they want to set up their telescopes or where they want to be stationed that day. I'm wondering if you're having everyone in the world coming in, do you expect a nightmare of traffic? And what about traffic patrol and stopping on the side of the road? How does all that play into this? The path of totality goes all the way from Oregon to South Carolina. And so even the U.S. Department of Transportation is really focused on traffic patterns and traffic flow on that Monday. We, on a local level, are obviously going to be having our local law enforcement dispersed throughout the community. We are getting some reinforcements from the Kentucky State Police, as well as um, hopefully additional reinforcements through the National Guard. So um, hopefully some of that will come through as well. But again, just making sure people know where they're going, that we have easily labeled viewing areas, so people know they can just pull into different spots and have a great view. But our main goal, too, is cut down on people just stopping on the side of the road because due to safety and, you know, making sure people are staying safe and getting them to a good viewing location where they'll, they'll have a wide open view. My suspicion is a lot of people don't know where they're going. They don't sure. do this that often. Sure. sure. No, that's so, a great point. A friend of mine said, well, you know, I think we just drive down there anywhere and just pull over the side of the road and you're probably good. I said, well, yeah, maybe, maybe not. How much 
signage is going to be there in place, or do you anticipate people who own land on the side of the road that say, hey, come over, park in my field? Will we see a lot of that? Absolutely. And, you know, we're kind of encouraging people to do that. If they have a wide open field that they're able to park cars in, absolutely, you know, allow folks to pull in there and write off exits and different things. Um, And, again, our signage is going to be prominent as soon as you enter into the the path of totality. We're working on a state level, and all of the digital message boards that are coming this way will all be directed to pointing people to places they can view the eclipse, as well as working on large signage to go on the Western Kentucky Parkway and Penny Rail Parkway and different areas that – can direct people to viewing locations, but then also throughout our community. You know, we'll have specific event directional signage that will direct people to the closest viewing location and and whatever they are trying to get to and making sure that our traffic control officers are able to direct people as quick and timely as possible. There has to absolutely be an X marks the spot for your right dead center for the longest time of totality. Do you know where Uh that X is? I do. That location where the moon's axis is closest to the earth is located on Princeton Road in the northern part of Christian County. And so that area is going to be open on the day of the eclipse for folks to roll in and view the eclipse from that point. That's also where NASA will be set up. They'll be broadcasting live. We have media outlets coming from all over the world that will be headquartered at that location, you know, getting footage of not only the eclipse, but also all of the visitors that are out there getting to witness this and watching this maybe for the first time for a lot of them. So that is definitely an area of focus, and we know that that's going to be a high-traffic area in that northern part of the county. Let's just say somebody's going to get up that morning and drive three, four, five hours to the area. Is that even advisable? Can they still get if they leave early, early in the morning? Can they still get there and find a decent place to go? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we anticipate a lot of our traffic on that Monday is going to be folks driving in from around the region, you know, because you won't be able to see this in Lexington and Louisville and the eastern part of the state. When you think about it, that 70-mile band is pretty narrow in the grand scheme of Mm -hmm. the Bluegrass State. So encouraging people to come over and enjoy this with us because, you know, to be so close to totality and to be so close to this indescribable event and to miss out just on a few percentages of, of totality being outside of that band, We want everybody to get into that path and be able to witness this event. Our website is a great resource. People can look up public viewing locations and kind of have a place in mind. And we'll be doing live updates of all of our different locations on our Facebook and social media pages. But again, our website, which is eclipseville.com, is a great place for people to learn more about all of the different options that are available to them. The great thing about this path of totality is, again, it's 70 miles wide, and it goes through 90 miles of Kentucky. So I encourage everyone, you know, get as close to that center line as possible because that's really going to determine how much totality duration you have, so how long you get to stand in the darkness. On the outskirts of either of those paths, um, it'll be about 20 seconds, but then the closer you get to that center line, that stays around 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. So you want to get as close to that line as possible, but this path of totality goes through about 13 counties within Kentucky. So lots of great options to choose from. And this is a great opportunity on a regional level as well for folks to get to explore different counties in the western part of the state and get to take advantage of all the things that the western region has to offer. Brooke, is there an app out there so you can sort of like follow along on a map so you know when you're right in the center of that blue line? There is. So we actually have partnered with a company called Palaroo, and that's P-A-L-A-R-O-O. And you can look for Hopkinsville Solar Eclipse, and when you pull up the map feature, it'll show you where all these events are taking place. But then there's also a big star that will show you exactly where you're located and where that point of greatest eclipse is located. How many times have you given this speech? Can you do it in your sleep? I can do it. I think I do do it in my sleep, actually. I think my husband's recording me <laughs> like sleep talking about the eclipse. I think I say solar eclipse more than I say my name. So. All right, Brooke. Thanks a million. All right. Thank you. A helpful hint, never look at the bare sun with your bare eyes. Solar viewing glasses are cheap, and you'll find them everywhere these days. Even a welder's mask will help. Eclipseville.com and Stargeezer Astronomy are those two websites. We're out of time. This is Charlie Baglin inviting you to join us again in a week, and we'll go inside outdoors again here on Kentucky Afield Radio.